What's up everybody and welcome to the latest ranking that is a Patreon pick video and this is my top 10 movies that need a remake. Movies that I think could either benefit from somebody else telling the story from a modern version or a movie that maybe had a good concept but was not executed the best and has potential to be done much better with a second chance. Now Patreon pick videos is something that I do every single month. On my Patreon page I have polls and suggestion boxes where people can throw out different ideas and I have my patrons vote on which idea each month they like the best. They're very fond of these top tens and rankings and this month the favorite pick was top ten movies that I want a remake for. So if you want to join in in the fun and you want to also support this channel financially, please check down below in the video description for my Patreon page. There's a lot of different perks, a lot of different tiers with different things like exclusive access videos, like early access videos, Blu-ray digital copy codes, exclusive Q&As, all different kinds of content down there that I try to give back to those that want to support my channel in a much more direct financial way. So please consider checking that out and I appreciate you checking it out and that consideration. Now as far as this ranking video, now I'm somebody who's quite famous or infamous in my little space, my little corner of YouTube for really being pro remakes, for having a lot of remakes that I prefer over the originals, a lot of remakes in my favorite movies of all time. And pretty much every single time that they announce a remake, you always see people that are immediately jumping on the negative train that immediately are dismissing this film like it's gonna be the worst thing ever just as soon as they announce it. And I take the opposite approach. Now, I don't think all movies need a remake and there's certainly some movies they decide to go back to the drawing board on that I think is a ridiculous choice, but there's always potential that you're going to get a good movie out of it. Whether or not it's better than the original, there's always potential that somebody could bring something new to that property, to that storyline, or to those characters that might end up being of merit. And so I always try to give remakes the benefit of the doubt more times than not. So this is a list of 10 movies that I either do not like but want to see a different version of because the concept is cool, or a movie that I maybe did like or love that I think could actually benefit from being told in a modern way and being updated with modern effects or modern storytelling. So starting off at number 10, and these are in no particular order whatsoever, is gonna be a movie called Jumper. Now this came out in like the mid late 2000s. It was a movie with Hayden Christensen and you had Samuel L. Jackson. And it was telling the story about these group of people that have the ability to teleport anywhere in the world. And then an opposing faction of people that are trying to hunt and kill those people, which Samuel L. Jackson was the leader of that side of things. And the concept here I thought was great. I thought it was a great setup for a really cool sci-fi action movie. There was actually a lot of lore built into this concept that they dipped their toes in and didn't explore quite enough or maybe explored too much and didn't go as far with the action or the excitement as they should have. Nonetheless, this is one of those concepts that I think could really benefit from somebody dumping a few million dollars into it and telling much more of a medium modest budget and really dive into that potential lore of this concept of these two factions and why you have these people that are having these abilities and why they're being hunted by these people that hate those with those abilities so it's a decent enough movie i mean it's a solid two and a half star three star movie as it is but i think that there's potential to do much better number nine is going to be time cop one of my favorite jean claude van damme movies now this is a concept again just like with jumper that I feel like was utilized in a pretty good way in the movie for the time that it came out and for the era of action films and sci-fi films and the era of CG that we had. But this movie has aged very poorly, especially the special effects in it. And there's just something about the concept of this this force of cops, of time travelers that are trying to police time travel, where you got criminals that are utilizing time travel to for their own nefarious needs. And having a movie with a modern budget and with modern storytelling, especially with modern special effects about these cops or these enforcers that are following criminals across time, I think that there's such huge potential for that. Even as like a mini series, I think that there's potential to have different time periods, different eras where you have modern criminals going into like the 1700s or, you know, almost like Bill and Ted going to all these different eras and trying to get all these things to, to benefit themselves and their criminal underbelly. Meanwhile, you got some action star following them in and kicking their ass all across history. 
I think there is a lot of potential to have a very badass modern retelling of that movie. That's a property that I think I could get behind the possibility that a modern remake could easily best the original. Number eight is going to be Waterworld. Now, this movie is infamous for being one of the biggest studio bombs ever. At the time, it was the most expensive movie ever made. It did not really, I think it made a profit, but it did not make anywhere near the amount of money that they were hoping it would. And to be completely honest, I've never sat down and watched this movie from start to finish. I've seen the entire movie in pieces more times than I can count. I bought the Blu-ray, so at some point I do want to sit down and watch it from start to finish, but it's always been a movie where, just like the last two that I've talked about, the concept, the world, the lore, the look of it, the style of it, is much more appealing than the actual product that we got. And I don't know if it was just because of the time period and the technological restrictions of the time or whatever it is, or maybe it's the campiness that this movie goes for and some of the goofiness that it mixes with that Mad Max on water type style. But I think that there is potential for somebody to come in, maybe even George Miller himself, come in and take just that Mad Max on the ocean concept and make some badass summer blockbuster out of it. And it's a movie that certainly is a cult classic. It has its fans, but it's much more infamous for the failure to make back its money and much more infamous for the failure that the studio considered it to be. So right there, prime for a remake. Take that concept, try it again with modest budgets, with modern storytelling and modern filmmaking, and I think you could have a hit on your hands that would appease new fans as well as fans of the original. Number seven, now this is the one that I'm probably gonna get in trouble for, and I'm gonna give 100% credit for this choice to Uncle Sean over at Sean Chandler Talks About, and that's Back to the Future. Now, Back to the Future is absolutely one of my favorite films of all time. I'm pretty sure it's in my top five. It's a movie that for years I would have told you is the number one movie you should never remake, solely because I think if you were gonna make an argument for is there has there ever been a perfect film, it's Back to the Future. Whether or not it's your number one favorite of all time, that is a perfect movie, perfect script, perfect casting, perfect direction. It ages beautifully, tells an amazing story. The themes are still resonant. And it's because of all of that, when I watched the video that Sean released, kind of giving his arguments for why he thought Back to the Future actually is one of the movies that really could benefit from a remake and could lend itself very well to a remake, I was immediately won over because the central argument to his point that you have a kid that goes back in time to the era of his parents' high school, meets his parents, and you have like a kid from the 80s going back and experience in the 50s, you could translate that concept to modern day and tell a really cool story where a modern teenager that's used to, you know, Twitch streams and YouTube and uh, super fast internet and TikTok and all of that, going back into like the 90s when we had dial-up internet, when you had Super Nintendo, when you had all this shit that is so taken for granted nowadays. I think that that's actually a really cool idea. It would never be as good as the original. Like we would put that on paper right now. It could be amazing and it will never be as good as the original. That was just lightning in a bottle of perfection. But there's potential if you have the right writers and you have the right creative team and you even have like the, the creative team of the original movie and maybe even some of the stars involved somehow to kind of steer the ship, there's potential to do a modern retelling of that story that I think could actually have a lot of charm to it. It could be really cool for this generation to watch to where they're seeing these modern kids go back and experience the childhood that they experienced it's just a, it's a concept that really could lend itself very well to a modern retelling. Probably will never happen. I think that if any properties out there are safeguarded, it's definitely back to the future to where the creative team is not ever going to let their grip loose and let somebody screw it up. But uh, I think that if they ever do loosen that grip, there's a lot of potential there. Number six is a movie called In Time. This came out maybe about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit less, it had Justin Timberlake, and it was a concept of, of this sci-fi concept to where time is now the main currency, to where you have your timeline built into your wrist, and if you run out of time, you die. And so the rich hold all the time, and rather than just being the rich and owning all the property out there, they live for centuries, and all of the poor people, you're lucky to see 30. And so people are gambling with their life, they're gambling with time, they're trying to steal time. And it was just such a cool and brilliant sci-fi concept that ended up being just 
a good movie. You know, I think it's a solid three-star movie. I think Justin Timberlake's pretty good in it as well. So it's a movie that I think just didn't quite realize how amazing its concept was. And it was a movie that came out very modestly. Nobody really saw it. It came out on video. I checked it out, really liked it, and thought that it deserved maybe a little bit more credit than it was getting. But I understood it wasn't something that was going to like make Justin Timberlake a huge action star or blow up the box office. But that concept has so much potential. There's potential to do a mini series with that. There's potential just to do a straight up remake and throw it in theaters. But that sci-fi concept of time and people's lives being the modern currency is just so cool and fascinating that I really want to see somebody like a Denis Villeneuve or somebody take on that concept and make a movie with it. I think it could be a brilliant sci-fi film. Number five is going to be a little movie called They Live, one of my favorite of the John Carpenter classics. Now, this is a film that is very heavy in social commentary, where it's talking about consumerism and advertisement and the hypnosis of modern society. And I'll tell you what, of all the movies on this list, that is probably the one where you could most easily translate that into a modern retelling, and it would be 100% still relevant, to the point where you could just do nothing but add more to that concept. I mean, I think all of us can agree that uh, no matter what political side you're on, that we tend to view society as brainwashed. And so the whole concept here about this action star that finds these sunglasses and when he puts them on, he sees the world for what it truly is, which is this gigantic hypnosis by aliens to where half the people walking around are aliens living among us. Every single piece of advertisement out there is saying things like sleep, obey, keep buying, all these little simple subliminal messages to keep people in line, to keep them being sheep. and. For as awesome as this original movie is, for a piece of just 80s nostalgia with not only the action scenes, but the concept and, and how charming the really ultra cheesy like 50s alien designs are, it's, a, it's an absolute classic. It's a cult classic. It's one of those movies that if you love it, you still love it and it ages very well. But there's a very, very easy argument to be had that as long as you get a storyteller and somebody with enough style to actually have the balls to take on a John Carpenter movie, with modern effects and with modern social commentary, I think you could do a version of this film for modern audiences that could be awesome. Number four is a movie called Chopping Mall. Now this is a film that is one of those 80s cult classics that is almost more famous for the posters and for some of the uh, artwork and imagery than the movie itself, and especially the title. I mean, that's just a great 80s horror title. And it's a movie that I've tried to watch two or three times and can never really get through it. It's not a very good movie. And that's the reason why I think it needs to be remade. I think that people in Hollywood need to focus more on movies that failed or that didn't quite reach its potential the first time when they're looking at remakes, instead of looking at something that succeeded and is this gigantic beloved property and they're just trying to rob the name and the clout. Something like Chopping Mall, to where you have this mall where people break into it during closing hours to throw this party and unbeknownst to them there's this futuristic security system with these robots and AI that are going to, that there's something wrong with their program and they get stuck in this mall with a bunch of murderous robots that are trying to take them all out with laser guns and phaser guns and sawing limbs off and stuff like that. I mean that right there sounds great for an 80s cheese cult classic and a lot of people do love this movie, but just take that concept and try to do that in a movie nowadays where something like that is not only much more plausible, but is something that probably exists in certain areas of the world. And I think it would still be a pretty badass concept for a horror or for a, a really good thriller, but I'd definitely make it carnage filled if I'm the one filling the budget. So that's just a concept I think would be really cool. Something that you could revisit and do it with modern gore, do it with modern robotics and modern AI concepts, things that we already know exists like, you know, Siri and all of that. We, we can make a movie based off of modern technology that we all use every single day and just go Skynet with it, but full on into horror slasher territory. Revisit Chopping Mall, people. You're sleeping on it. I'm telling you, Hollywood revisit it. Number three is one of Michael Bay's forgotten films called The Island. Now, I'm somebody who does like this movie. I have a really good time with it. I think that it's a good little action sci-fi uh, adventure movie. I like the main characters. I like the story and the concept. And so for a movie that's very quickly forgotten in the Michael Bay filmography, I have a really good time with it and I always have. 
But there has always been a disappointment with me to where the core concept and the first 30, 40 minutes of this movie, the way that it sets up this concept to where you have all these people living in this shelter and there's this lottery game that goes on every single day and whoever wins the lottery gets to go to the island, which from what they are told, there's been like this apocalypse they are the remaining survivors of humanity and the island is paradise. That is where the city and the world and uh, society has been rebuilt and they can only let a few people in at a time, otherwise they'll get overpopulated. And so they win the lottery, they think, oh my God, my life is gonna get so much better. And in reality, they are all clones that have been bred and have been bought by rich people. And when you win the lottery and go to the island, they get killed and harvested for their organs. So some rich guy gets into a car accident and needs a liver transplant. Somebody wins the lottery and they take the liver out of their clone. It is a awesome and horrific science fiction horror concept that was slapped into a PG-13 action movie directed by Michael Bay. And like I said, the, the version that we get, I still think is a fun movie, but if you take that same 30, 40 minutes of the opening of this movie and then go ultra dark with it to where it's this really sadistic concept and them finding out that they're all just getting bred for murder essentially and having to fight back against this system, there is huge potential for a full on rated R badass horror thriller with that concept. And I've always felt that way. I've always felt like when I watch this movie, I'm getting set up for this awesome, fucked up film, and then it just kind of goes action sci-fi spectacle, and I, oh man, why'd you do that? Like, you had it, you had it right there. You didn't see the potential on paper. Number two is going to be Trick or Treat. This is an 80s metal horror film that those of us that grew up with this and know the soundtrack and belonged to the metal fan community, Pretty much all of us grew up loving this movie and still sing its praises. The very underknown horror classic in my mind. But along with everybody else that loves this movie, I think we can all agree that it's not the best movie on paper. There's certainly some shoddy execution, the acting here and there, certainly the budget and the special effects hold it back. But I think that it is a concept, and again, I'm beating a dead horse, that could translate really well into modern times and could work well with a modern retelling with modern effects. You have this guy who is an absolute fanatic of this rock star. The rock star dies tragically, and he gets a hold of his last album that has not been released yet, and when he plays the record backwards, he can talk to this rock star from beyond the dead and starts to use him to get back at all his high school bullies, and things get very sinister from then on. You could still have a concept like that to where you have somebody that's you know really into nostalgia, that they're a modern metalhead and, and they love this guy that died in the 80s or something and they get a hold of this record from eBay with like a, a random ass account and puts it on and when he plays it backwards like he read on Google, he can talk to the guy. I mean, you could just translate that concept easily to a modern person who's used to walking around with YouTube music and everything in his headphones. And I think that the concept could even be cooler for like a throwback aesthetic to have all these 80s metal references and everything in 2020. And so it's a movie that I think it, it, it could have a lot more potential than the movie that we got. I love it because of nostalgia. I love it because it's the greatest movie soundtrack of all time, Fastway. And I love it because growing up as a metalhead, all of the things that this kid endured, to a much lesser degree, I endured. And so it just, it's something that never really ages. It's a concept about bullying that never really ages. And I think that the whole throwback aesthetic that you could bring into this, telling it decades later, could actually make for a really cool retelling. But number one for me, which despite not really being in order, probably would be my number one, is The People Under the Stairs. This is a Wes Craven classic that has a lot of fans and I am not one of them. I have tried to watch this movie at least three or four times, literally from start to finish, and I just don't care for it. I just don't get into it. The weird, dark, campy humor does not really work for me. The central concept of this kid that knows this 
fucked up house in his neighborhood and he breaks into it and finds out that there's all these like demonic children underneath the stairs and the owners of the house are these really fucked up like sadomasochistic bondage freaks and there is some really really fucked up wild things you could do with that alone but there's a lot of social commentary in this movie regarding the hood and regarding the african-american community and there's a whole bunch of things that's bred into this really horrific fucked up concept that nowadays just like all the other things i was talking about that have social commentary are still true and are still things that we could talk about and, and still be very relevant today if you just literally copy and pasted the same exact concept to the point where you got somebody like Jordan Peele that is really making a name for himself and making these little horror thriller classics that are really bathed in social commentary. I think he would be a perfect person to, if not direct, produce something like this, some kind of a modern retelling of this Wes Craven movie that is kind of an underknown movie. You think Wes Craven, you think Nightmare on Elm Street, you think Scream. I even hear Last House on the Left and Hills Have Eyes before I ever hear anything about people under the stairs, but it's a movie that horror fans really know and has a huge cult fan base. So you could bring this concept and do it again with a modern retelling, with modern storytelling, and get rid of some of those campy aesthetics and do it in a very serious, dark, and, and, uh, and self-aware tone as far as the commentary and as far as the, the things that it's trying to say and things that it's trying to make a statement about. And I think you could actually redo this movie in a way that I would love it, that I would prefer to the original in more ways than one. So for a long time, people asked what was the movie that I think needs to be remade, and I used to always say Stephen King's It, and now that we've gotten that, my answer has pretty much always changed to The People Under the Stairs, because it's a movie that I think has so much potential, but I just do not like the version that we got. So hopefully one day, we will get a version that maybe I will enjoy so much more. So what do you guys think? What are 10 movies that you want to be remade that you think could benefit from a remake or do you think was kind of a failed attempt the first time and deserves a second chance? Let me know down below what your thoughts are and we will talk about it. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this one. I have a lot more rankings and top 10s on this channel and many more to come. And as far as Patreon picks, please remember to check out my Patreon link down below so that you can participate in next month's Patreon pick. And maybe your idea will be the one that comes to fruition on this YouTube channel. So thank you guys for watching, as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.